What's up, everybody? Are you to Real, Real Estate, Estate Power, Power Play. Play. It is Tuesday afternoon, and today we're going to jump into the top things that you need to know when you're walking through a property, okay? The top things you need to know when you're doing due diligence, before you buy a deal, what you should look at, um, the things that really can make or break a deal um, when you're going through, right? The numbers have to be right, and one of those things is making sure um, the condition, making sure the properties, you know, as you're expecting it to be. So Gabe Redarte, the, the man, the myth, the legend is with us today. And so is Marty Grisanti. How you doing, boys? Good, good. So far, so good. Can't complain. I, 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 will, I will complain a little bit. You know, I see our intro video and there's a picture of me from like 10 years ago. And I'm like, ah, oh, remember your youthful skin marty and now you look like an old catcher's mitt hmm. ah. you shaved bro you shaved well i need to do something to try to look like that again but yeah uh, maybe i just need a tan little like gabe oh. looking good buddy yeah you got to get some of that texas sun bro i know so. it's been a while um, we're up here in the north game we don't get none of that we just we barely had blueness peak yeah, out of oh, okay. peak yeah, out. Storm. this is this is how fast things move here we had a storm yesterday for um literally it was about eight hours everything shut down for about eight hours it was overnight <laughs> the schools uh didn't open till 10 a.m over a storm um so it was interesting. Uh, there was some tornadoes that touched down in like Austin area, but we're we're all good for everyone who's concerned. Let's do this. Let's talk about making money, real estate, building wealth. Absolutely. So so I know you guys are are doing quite a few rehabs, right? And uh, I've started doing a little bit more rehabs myself. And when you're jumping into a rehab, obviously you've got um, you've got to put together a scope of work, right? You got to put together what are the things that you're looking for that you're going to fix up, and those things that you fix up drastically, or or I would say probably specifically impact what the resale value is going to be, right? D depending on the comps that you're either trying to match or beat or what that looks like. So, Gabe, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you, man, because I know you're uh, you're transacting quite a bit right now. When you're walking through, let's start with a single family home. Uh, you put it under contract, you go to due diligence. What's what's the first thing you do before you actually <clears throat> step foot in the house? Like what is what is the the pre-work, let's say, before you go out the, to the, the property? Pre, the prep work. The prep work. Um, you know what's funny is that I was uh, while I was writing this up, guys, um, I think this is a great topic for most people because they're not walking properties all the time or maybe that you know i remember i had someone walk it with me quite a few times ago and man what am i really looking for and i came from a construction background like i know this stuff and i was still a little cautious about it so um i definitely want to help out those who are listening to really grasp this uh if you're new or if you have any questions uh, go ahead and just make a comment there uh in the comment post and we'll be able to answer those marty is a pro at doing this too so we'll all be able to chirp in um okay one of the things I notice is uh, just overall, what's the overall appeal of the house? And I've walked through hundreds of hundreds of homes now where I can tell the way, like if it smells different from the yard. I mean, let's be really in, like real. You pull up, you get out of the car and you're going, okay, is it a moist climate? Is I mean, you could just tell nowadays. Now I'm walking up the driveway. I'm getting a visual of the house or the property or the land. And I'm telling what's around. What's the scenario? Is there trees that are just totally overgrown? Is there, you know, I know we, we kind of still talk about high grass and stuff. And that might be a motivated seller or a tenant that just doesn't care. But it does matter because, I mean, if you're going to do that on the outside of the house, what does the inside look like? Right. Yep. And so as we know, and I want to definitely get into some of Ronnie's of like, we have some questions because Ronnie just loaded us with some some facts that happened over this past weekend for him and some of his property. So we're going to get into that of just, you know, if you're not taking care of the exterior of the home, right, how is the inside being taken care of? Right. Or how is some of the paneling being taken care of or the landscaping or was there wood rot over there that no one really cared about because the exterior is just kind of like, uh, you know, it's, it's hard work. I don't have a saw. I don't have anybody to come do this or I don't I'm not handy. All these things are real. OK, so that's just stuff that I look at whenever I look at property, even when it comes to land. Like if we look at land and there's like 
five or six beat up cars that are just out there, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, like, where did these vehicles come from? Did anyone die in the, these things? Like, you know, you're asking these questions, like, was this a deal gone bad? You know, <laughs> um, from tires to planters that look like tubs, you okay. name it. I'm looking at these things, guys, right? And like, that's what, that's what I'm looking at. And that helps me to start going in and saying, okay, with the right mindset of going, okay, you're going to have a couple surprises here. Right. And that's just it. I'm going to have a not every house. If I go into a neighborhood that's been around for less than 10 years and the grass is always manicured and the person just had a mom that passed away or something and they're just looking at getting rid of it. It's a probate deal. I typically I mean, I already know it's not going to be as bad typically, you know, so I'm already preparing that the roof isn't as bad. The AC unit isn't as bad. Um, maybe like just the foundation isn't bad. Right. The plumbing might be PEX pipe, just stuff like that. So this is all really good stuff that, that I look at the moment I walk into a property or walk around the property. I'm looking at that. So anyways, that's just my my intro to what we're going to get into. Nice. So so really just taking in a really good. OK, what does this feel like? What does it look like? What are the general things that I see and how do I feel about that? Right. Is this. And, and you said there, you said, is there going to be surprises? I like to say, is there going to be how many cans of worms am I going to get into? Right. Mm -hmm. What are those surprises? And two, or worms. does it look pretty clean? Does it look good? What are some of the factors that I could tell that, hey, maybe it's just lived in and not touched for five years, but well-maintained versus not well-maintained? Marty, uh, when you're going through on the initial side, that prep work, when you, you show up, you're getting ready to look at the house. What are some of those uh, initial things on your end? Yeah. And Gabe did a great job of really covering the prep work. You know, that's the stuff that you got to do. I think there's um, there's nuance, though, to when you do come to the property. Right. So we're going to talk about single families because that's uh, for me, that's what we do every day. So when we're walking up to a single family property, you know, there's a way to, again, you're going to be dealing with either the tenant or the owner. Uh, a lot of times it's going to be the owner and there may be a tenant there, but there's going to be ways and how you, you're going to respond or how you're going to communicate with those ones individually, right? You're, you're going to, yeah. you're kind of going to talk to them differently only because for instance, the tenant, you can get a lot of good information from the tenant about the property that maybe the owner wouldn't give you necessarily. Um, I'll say this, right? When you're walking up to a property, you know, you, you guys, some people, this may be news to you. It shouldn't be, but you want to be respectful of the property and of, you know, whether it's an absolute dump or it's a brand new custom built house, you need to be very respectful of that. And there, there's no need to, like, if there's a smell, you shouldn't be it's just stuff, guys. I know people don't. Some people are like not, not aware that that's OK to do. No, you, you need to be like a professional when you right. approach these people um, <clears throat> because they may not know there's anything wrong with it. Right. Just because they live a different way doesn't mean it's necessarily the wrong way. It's just not the way that you do things. Right. So keep that in mind. You know, these are human beings. So, yeah, you know, you want to. I'm just going to give you kind of something for that person, Ronnie and Gabe, like when you're walking up, because some people have no clue at this level. True. Uh, they just do not. And they have all these things in their head and they go, okay, so do I knock on the door? Do I ring the door? Do I stand away? I'm going to give it to you really simple because again, I, I think we need to explain this into real fine details for the people who don't and never done this. Let's do this. Does that sound good? Let's do it. Let's and Ryan, I want people. you to jump in too, because in Gabe, because I know you guys have your own different way of doing it. So guys, you know, number one, be on time. That's good. Very good. Be on time. Guys, it's, it's people's, uh, you know, they're taking time out of their day to meet with you. Even if, it, you know, <clears throat> even if it's a tenant, it's be respectful of people's time. Be on time. Number Got one. It. Great. So you walk up to the house, Knock on the door first. Make sure you're there to go and talk to the person before you walk around it. You don't want to walk around it and then knock on the door. Knock on the door. Tell them that you're there. That's so Introduce yourself. It's so interesting you say that because, it, it, see, I, guys, we're in Texas, and there's no walking around people's property in Texas, guys. This is not – you don't do that here. You know, you're like, that, that could be right. dangerous. 
All right. So we just don't go around just walking around. So yes, not let the person know you're there. <laughs> That's a good point, man. You got to. You got to. And, and, right. and then just make sure you let them know who you are, what you do, right? That you're there for the appointment or, you know, introduce yourself, shake their hand, look them in the eye. And, uh, and I think that's how I would start with that. You know, you, you just want to be good. on time and, and take and be, be a professional and be personable. So that's really good. So so really just the the aspects of of being a professional showing up, being someone that mm -hmm. when they look at you, they're like, OK, this is the guy I want to work with. Bingo. Really? Right. Because yeah. it's an impression. Even if you've already got a contract, there's a really big impression that happens when you meet with them. Right. Um, you know, when people get there was a there was people on I can't remember where I saw it but they were saying what is the number one factor for people getting upgraded to first class when they're flying and the number one factor that you would get upgraded to first class if there were seats available like for free was if you looked like you belonged in first class right like if you showed up in pajamas and that they wouldn't they wouldn't even offer it to you but if you had like a suit on and you look nice um, and it looked tailored and you looked like a person who belonged, they would offer it to you if it was available. It's kind of the same thing. Dress appropriately for where you're going, right? And what I like to do is dress one step above, not two steps. Don't show up to a $50,000 house in a suit, okay? But maybe show up to that with, you know, some nice jeans, a collar, right? Be one step ahead what you expect the people to be. And it comes across as professional. You don't want to come across as being like, oh, you're that guy. Um, but being one step ahead of whatever that clientele expects. And it's pretty easy. I judge it based on, uh, based on price point, right? Depending on the price point is depending on how I'm going to show up in my costume per se that I, that I show up wearing. So, so the next step, so you're coming in, uh, you've done the prep work, um, you get the general overview of the house, what it looks like. Um, how do you guys know, like, do you guys just look at what's wrong with the property? Are you guys comparing maybe the, the current condition or the current layout to another property you're trying to make your similar to? Like when you walk around and you're like putting together this is what I'm going to do on the property, right? This is the work. Um, how do you guys, how do you guys manage that? Right? Like when you're walking through my, I, I just did a rehab for instance on, uh, in Galesburg here in Michigan. And, um, you know, we walked in, it looked really, really nice, right? You walk in there, they just bought the house four years ago or five years ago. Um, they're going through a divorce you know, there was some things here, there that were wrong and the paint color and, you know, there's purple walls. And for the most part, the house was pretty nice. The cabinets were fairly new. <clears throat> but when I walked in and when you see it now, it's completely different because I was trying to match something at a certain level. Right. So how do you guys walk through that process from determining the stuff that's wrong with it versus Here's what I'm going to have to update in the house. Walk, walk me. Man, through that's process. so good. Can I chirp in here? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, so guys, I'm, I want to answer this question from, from both the investor point of view and somebody who used to do rehabs for other investors. All right, guys, one of the things that you will find if you're, if you're new to this and you're building your wealth and you're, you're looking at buying properties, one of the things you'll find uh, and, and I've seen a lot of people do it. And I think majority of the people will walk through and go, I wouldn't live here. Right. That's the first thing. You know what? I wouldn't live here. I wouldn't deal with this. I wouldn't do that. And you're going, this isn't your house, right? This is an investment property. This is literally, if you're in a stock portfolio type person, this is one more asset in a portfolio, or you're getting ready, ready to get it to somebody else's portfolio, which might be their own house. But every area, every neighborhood, whatever you look at, that property has its own comp that it's designed for. And you can't make something go outside of its characteristics, right? You just can't do it. There's not enough. Even if you had enough money, this is the crazy part. If I could just put another 500, another thousand or something else into it, maybe touch up this and the exterior, you got to realize that the comp is what it is. 
you can put another 50 grand into a property and it'll still be the same property in the same location, right? The same style home. And so those are some of the things that I hear a lot. I don't know about you guys. I know we all talk with different types of people, different phases, but it's one of the major things of going, look, this isn't, this is the like kind. Let's go with like kind. So what is a like kind deal? Well, you could go up to the property and like kind is the structural integrity of the building. So you can go by the year. All right. You can go by, okay, everything's on pier and beams in this neighborhood. All right. So if everything's on pier and beams in a neighborhood, you're typically not using brick siding, right? You're pr probably not doing stuff like that. Is it all on slab? Okay. Well then you might be dealing with brick siding or hardy plank siding, right? Stuff like that. So those are some of the key things. And why does that matter? Because you know, right, that there's some things you just can't change. If you're on pair and beams, it's a little bit easier to change the plumbing, right? It's a little bit easier to get underneath there and move some things around. So the, the rehabs might be a little differently when it comes to changing bathrooms and changing styles. And let's move this over here. You start getting into slabs, it's going to be really costly for you to go in and start moving around the plumbing in that slab to make that bathroom look the way you thought. Yep. Now, here's the thing that I noticed, and I don't know about you guys, but I noticed that on houses, like over the years, I noticed the houses that were on slams, they, slabs, they were just thought out differently. They thought they were thought out to never move the plumbing. Like the plumbing is going to be in this baby is not going to be moving. <laughs> right. Yep. And so it was just thought out differently. And so that's just some of the tips that I want to help people with of just grabbing the concepts of you can't change the neighborhood. You can't change the overall structure, meaning um, if it's on pier and beams and you want to keep that building like it's not just a teardown, but you want to keep it, then you got to just go with like kind. And that's what it is. Right. And just number one thing is. If you're doing this for investing and you already have a home said you already live in a home you have your your setup there remember this is an investment right this is something you're going to put money into to get some form of a return back whether it's short term or long term and so you don't need to go into their thinking this is something for me and i would never put this here where you never know people that might be the the case for the whole neighborhood so that's my takeaway i don't that's, know what about you that, Mark? that's really good so so marty um, looking at the like kind, making sure that the property is similar to what you're expecting the rehab to be, you know, you're not, you're not anticipating, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put all this extra stuff and try to get a higher value. So when you walk in, we've got like kind, we look at that. What's the next step? How do you determine, okay, I'm not just fixing things, right? It's not just about fixing that hole in the wall. It's about fixing it make sure it passes inspection and that it's upgraded to the level I want to sell it at. Walk me through that process. Sure. Yeah. I think a lot of it, this goes back to the pre-work. So when you're getting for us, we want to get a comp and we want to get maybe two to three. Our unfair advantage is you know, one of our partners is a realtor. So we're going to get three houses that say, Hey, here's what it can look like. Uh, you know, here's what the ARV can look like if we do a really nice job. So now, you know, all right, if we have X budget and we go in here and we'll see what it needs, but it's probably going to need some work to get into there. Right. You know, what is that going to look like for us? So a lot of it for us is just the pre-work of knowing what are the houses like Gabe was saying with the like kind and what are they selling for when it's all been repaired up so that when we go in there, now we know, all right, so well, they just did a bathroom. So we're going to need to do this bathroom. Cause that's, you know, it's sold for 250 and in order to get that 250, the bathroom was done, the kitchen was done, the floors were done, the paint was done. So we got to go in here and see, okay, the, okay. The, ki the kitchen's actually really nice. We right. might be able to get away with this kitchen. It might just need to be new countertops. So the cabinets are fine. Just maybe repainted. So there's a lot of new, there's a lot of nuance for us because we're going to be flipping these, right? So you really need to do the work in order to get that number. We can't, you can't get away with maybe just some paint like on like a rental. So keep that in mind when you're when you're looking at the property. Know what are you going to do with this? You know, you have to have an idea like if you're going to flip it. Well, then remember that it's you got to do it. You really got to do it the right way in order to to get that 250 to get that number that you're looking for. 
But if you're thinking about, like Gabe said, if you're going to be renting it, you may not need to do the granite countertops, right? If it's just going to be something you're renting. So, you know, it's just something that you got to be clear on as soon as you walk in, what it's going to be. I will say this, though. We looked at one yesterday, or my partner Matt did. I wasn't able to get there. But you'll never be able to out uh like putting money in you'll never be able to put so much money in that it changes where it's located (laughs) totally so this was a really nice three family and maybe back five years ago that would have been a property that matt and marty would have bought now we just we've learned our lesson it's just not worth it if it's in a location that you go well in 15 20 years it might turn we just you don't want to get into that situation, guys. You know, be, you want to be really proud of where you're buying. You, you want to be like my one of my realtor friends said it back in the day when I was just getting started. He's like, you'd want to be able to if you buy a property that's a rental. If worst case scenario, you'd have to spend the night there. Yeah, you're willing to spend the night there. <laughs> so, yeah, and and that's really good because you know, do you feel safe, right? Do you right. feel comfortable being at right. the property? Um, guys, we're talking about the big things, the top things you need to know when you are walking a property right now. And guys, if you have questions, put the questions in the comments. We want to answer them, right? There's, I, I can't tell you how many times people will call and just like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Whatever those questions are, go ahead and put them in. We'd love to, to answer them and go down that route and, uh, and really walk through that. I wanted to, I wanted to share something on top of what you said, Marty, was, when you're remodeling a home, like, and, and this tags into what Gabe said, this is an investment property, right? This is not the time to get fancy, right? This is that you, you get fancy on your personal home. Okay. When you have a personal thing and there's, you want, uh, uh, I have a custom bookshelf right here next to me, not the one behind me, but the one next to me. Okay. Like that's when you get fancy, but when you are remodeling a home for, to try to get an ARV or try to get a price point, literally find that comp. And if it's got yellow cabinets, you have yellow cabinets, right? If it's got, you know, alabaster walls, you have alabaster walls. If, if it's got, you know, new appliances, you put new appliances in. And, and if it doesn't, then don't do it right? Then, then don't worry about it. If it's got no stove and it's sold for blank and you're trying to get blank, then don't put a stove in. And I think that um, a lot of us try to get fancy. I know I do. I know the temptation is, oh man, that would be really cool. You know? Oh, it'd be really cool. I'll give you an example. I put a barn door in this last, this one I just finished. Now I would not have put a barn door in a normal rehab. The reason why I put a barn door is because I bought the wrong style barn door for my personal house. I didn't get a big enough one and we stained it before we realized it. And so I was like, oh, you know what? We could throw this in a rehab, right? And normally you're not going to add those fancy elements um, to a property. You're going to try to match exactly what that ARV was. And, um, and here's the things when people walk through a house, number one, the, the, best thing you can do is can really granite countertops, right? If you put granite, that's one of the, one of the most eye catching attractive things you can do is add granite. But people walk through, they look at the kitchen and they look at the master bath first, right? Those are the big, big, big hot items. Um, anything else that you guys think, or when you're thinking about the kitchen or master bathroom or any other area that you guys focus on, what do you do to make it pop? What do you do to make it stand out? Do you, do you add a little bit extra? Do do you have like a signature? I know some people have like, Hey, we put blank into all of our properties to add a unique, um, Gabe, I'll, I'll start with you. What do you, what do you think, man? Yeah. So here's a couple things I want to add for people who are looking at uh, investing. And this sounds like we're going to go towards the rehab side of it where you're, you're looking to make some money. OK, now on all of our flips, no matter what we do, even if it's rentals, we have uh, granite countertops on pretty much everything we have, unless it's just in a place where it just never fits. But almost every one of our units has granite. So just kind of give you guys perspective. But let's go into this part. 
we're talking about the kitchen and we're talking about the bathroom. We're talking about things that just have to happen. And one of the things that I have done, I know Marty does, and, and Ronnie was mentioning your signature of what you do. There's two reasons why you want to do it. One of them, all right, is because you have your name print on there. Okay, this is what I like to have in all of my properties right? It makes you feel good about your property. I mean, it's not like you have to do dump houses. You could be, do 500, 600, 700K houses, but you have certain things that you do like, I love this. And it could be something that has to do trendy, trend wise, right? Um, I know that uh, there's some rehabbers, including myself. I mean, it's simple as all the shutoffs are brand new. I don't want old shutoffs in my homes. If I'm messing with them, when you already have to do plumbing, just change the shutoffs. It just it just makes things better, right? Especially when it comes to rentals. Number two, here's the reason why this is really, really important. If you're going to have a signature thing or you want something on all your units, it's the economy of scale, right? It's the fact of going, I don't have to question what's going in. If I'm going to do barn door doors and all in the replacing the, sometimes you have like the, when you have those bifold pantry doors, you know, those bifold pantries, like, you know what, forget the bifold, let's do barn doors on all of them. Anything that we come across that has a bifold, barn doors instead. Great. Then that lets you know when you're walking into houses, I know what I'm going to do here. Right. And it helps you move through the property. Not that you're speeding through it as I'm talking to Mr. Ron or Mr. Marty and Marty's talking to me about the property. I want to be able to have my mind know, I know what I'm going to do over there. But I want to be engaged in the relationship and the conversation if they're there on the property. Uh, typically, that's what you're doing is you're there to keep the relationship strong, not just to take photos of the house or the property. Right. Um, the same thing with bathrooms. You have a signature thing in the bathrooms. Why? Because you know what it's going to cost you. Right. And you just kind of know I'm going to do the same thing here as I did the last five units or or ask somebody, what have you been doing, Marty, that you signature your properties on? that just you know people love it because here's the thing this is the cool thing marty know like he is partners with his realtor right um i have two realtors that i really rely on that's in the houston metro area and i ask them all the time what are you seeing in there that that their clients here's the key their buyer clients are excited about right what are your buyer clients excited about marty well for right now it's barn doors okay barn doors you know that's what we need <laughs> you know if that's what you want to be excited about let's do that what else are you excited about right what else do you hear them saying so these are key things that i think that you can as a as a newer investor or you're looking to build out your portfolio to kind of monetize and do i've learned this from a couple other people i've watched people do it and what it does is the economy scale is a big deal. Like I know what kind of flooring goes into all of my rentals. I know what kind of countertop goes into all of the rentals, right? I know what goes, it's just, it just makes everything streamlined. And the team, the construction crew that works on it, they go, oh, this is one of Marty's properties. He's going to want this. And you know what that helps do? This is, this is a side note, guys, that I think is a perk that's worth noting when we're talking about, again, the top things that you need to know when you're walking a property your contractor crew ends up knowing, hey, this is what Marty thinks about. He told me the last house. Yeah. I can make this decision. Hey, Marty, do you want me to do the same thing as before? Right. And now there's a speed of trust. And Marty goes, he got it. He knows it's the same thing we did on the last property. So that's good. And, and one of the things that Gabe said is, you know, asking, people's opinion, like asking professionals that are in this every day. I think what I've seen with a lot of beginners, especially with flipping is that they try to like have their ego, like, no, I know what people want. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. You got to trust what are people buying? It's not what people want. It's what are people buying? That's what you want yeah. to have in your home. That's what you want to have in your, in your flip or your investment property. What are, what are people actually buying? It's well, cool to like something. It, and, and and if I can add to that, <clears throat> on top of what are people buying, it's so easy to not understand the numbers, even for me, to not understand what things are actually going to cost. And, and when you're walking through and you're making the decision of, oh, I'm going to put those doors in, oh, I'm going to buy that flooring, 
oh, you know what? In order to get the discount, I got to order a pallet and I'm going to order both of them, even though it's going to cost me more for my next house so I can get the discount. Oh, I need to get X amount of, oh, I need, I need a different finish for the trim, right? right? Like when you start walking through, you know, oh, I just spent $150 on outlets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like dumb little things, guys. When you're walking through and you get the cost, it it really helps you be more confident. And for the wholesalers out there, you know, as, as people are learning to wholesale, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend to flip a property as soon as possible. Because not only will you get the experience of the the uh, cost and and even the bigger profit on the back end usually than a wholesale deal it will actually make you more attractive as a wholesaler i can't tell you when i was just wholesaling and you're just trying to do it and you might cancel kind of the stress that comes in with there like i gotta find a buyer i gotta find a buyer but if you're a flipper if you're willing to take the property down and do the property yourself and you've got a strategy and a plan and you've got the people in place it gives you more confidence on the negotiating with the other buyers and other buyers will see, oh, he's an investor too. He's one of us, right? He's one of us. He's not one of these wholesalers just trying to make a bunch of money. Oh, let's limit his fee to 15,000 bucks or $10,000 or 8,000 bucks. Oh no, he's a flipper. And then it's like, hey, Ronnie, you got anything you're not working on? Hey, you got anything coming up that that we could do? And now you're, you're on a peer to peer relationship rather than just being you know, that new wholesaler or trying to flip a property and you're able to talk a little bit more in detail with them. Hey, this is what you got to look out for this property. One, two, three. This is what I would do. You said it's that dude, trash outs aren't that much. Just get a dude with a dump trailer <laughs> instead of ordering an $800 dumpster, get a $300 dump trailer and do that instead. Oh yeah, I got somebody call this dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and it helps do that. So um, guys, we are halfway through or a little I, more. Time. I got a question for Marty. Yeah. Marty, I, 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 taking down some notes, Marty, you do flips, you know, of all types. Cause have we seen your flips, you know, just through social media and you posting and seeing on your flips, you've taken people through new people through your properties, right? Yeah. What is the, what is an aha moment as you like, have you looked at someone's eyes? Have you take a new person through their property? Have you, what is the conversation like when you're taking them through a newer investor? What is the conversation that is like an aha moment that, you know, they walked away with and what can you help out anybody who's listening here with an aha moment of walking properties? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think, I think people go, wow, it's a little bit more work than we thought. <laughs> Right. And, and kudos to Matt and Amber, my partners, because they're really just they're they're the, the leaders on that. And uh, but I would say there's a couple of things that people may be short out on and you don't want to do that. And it's it's the little things. Right. It's the lighting fixtures. Right. It's the making sure that there is the the thermometers are new. Right. And, and he, I, you can see that people like go, you know, I, I never would have never would have done that. I never would have changed that out, I guess. And it's like, no, that's a big deal. Um, you know, realtors, they they're going to beat up flips. It's just what they do. They beat them up. And you don't want to be that. Like you said, we've all talked about kind of like the branding. You know, you have your personal touches. You don't want to have the personal touch of them saying this. This guy does crap flips. So I think the big things are like, hey, new appliances. You know, some people skip out on those. Got to do it. Got to do brand new appliances for us anyways. That's what we do. That's our, that's our special touch, right? Brand new appliances. We're going to do the roof if it's needed, no matter what. We're going to do the windows if they're needed, no matter what, right? We're going to do the furnace if it's needed, no matter what. And um, I, I, again, I mean, I we could go on and on because that's it's it, there's a lot. It's all of it. Right. I think that's the thing. It's all of it. It's all necessary for you to get someone who goes, I don't want the house. I need the house. And I'm willing to go 60, 70, 80,000 over asking because this is I know it's basically a custom redone house remodeled uh, 
it's like a new bill, but it's just in the same bones from the 1950s. And that's what you want. You want people fighting over your house. And in order to do that, you got to do all the little things in order to get it. And I think that's a big deal. But yeah, walking people through it, I think they see that it's a lot more work than they think. It's not HGTV. It doesn't happen overnight. And uh, it, it is, uh, it's a team effort and there's a lot of work that gets done to get it there. Dude, that's so good. That's so good. So any, uh, you know, as we're kind of coming through, so we talked about the prep work and the top things we've talked about, um, you know, the, the initial walkthrough and noticing what it looks like. We've talked about looking at comps and matching it. We've talked about adding your own unique flair to the property, your own unique signature on the property. Um, what are some final things, right? What, like, Think of when you come to the end of a project, right? When I when I just came to the end of this project, for instance, I'll just use my most recent. You come through, you do the final walkthrough, and there's 12 little things left. How do you how do you take it from okay, I started the project, I've gone through the project. How do I how do I put the final cap on it that like we're done? What does that look like? Like what does okay that final punch? Like that, that final punch, right? Just right. getting it, getting it to the end. What does that look like for you guys? Um, you know, honestly, guys, this the cool thing about this and about real estate. You can tailor this business to however you want it. You can be the person doing the final punch. Typically, somebody from our team or me is walking through the property. The final punch is me just highlighting things on my phone. You know, maybe some photos, other stuff. I mean, it happens wherever. And so to give you guys a peace of mind, if you're new to this, this happens in new built homes. This happens all over the place. You're always going to have a punch list. And the reason why is you have the main contractors going through this stuff and they're beating the crap out of things, tearing things apart. You got the GC that's walked through the whole process. He sees the same little uh, paint daub on the ceiling that went from the wall. And you're like, he just sees it every day that he walks through the property. And he's like, I got to touch that up. I got to touch that up. And he forgets to touch it up. Right. It just happens. It's just what it is. So you kind of have a couple things that you could go through. You can have it to where you have a, a punch out crew. If you have multiple rehabs going at one time, then you have, you know, a handy guy, maybe in another guy that just does all the handy stuff. And he just goes through and does that. The doorknobs, the other stuff, the, the, the subtle things that you're going to see, right? Okay. You'd have those things or you just you have it set up with your team of like, hey, I'm going to do the final punch out and this is how it's going to go. Right. And then you just do those things and you go through and we use it. I have a thing set up on my phone, so I just have it set up and I just do the regular punch out and I just copy it from the last property I did. Right. And I move it over and it's like, you know, the highlights, it's the, it's the exterior paint, it's the trim work, it's the lawn, it's the landscaping, it's the, it's the, all the door jams, all the doors are closing correctly. Right. I mean, the thing that gets on my nerves the most is that you have so many new doors in the house and brand new door handles and everything. And then you have two or three doors that don't close correctly because they're brand new and they had to make them fit to an older home or something. And they're off by, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. And then you have somebody come through here and goes, oh, the doors aren't working. There's got to be foundation issues. And you're going, no, that's not what it is. We did everything. We did everything to make you happy. Trust me. I want you to be happy. And then, you know, so subtle stuff like that. You just got to remember, you might have walked this property every other day. Uh, your rehab crew has done it every day. Be a little graceful for them and patient with them. Like they're, they're in there every day working. Uh, if you have a good crew, they're honestly working, trying to make it work for you. And you just got to have the, the view and the perspective of there's going to be another family or someone's going to come through here as the end buyer. And they're going to look at it with a fresh set of eyes. Right. And so that's just kind of like a mental game you have to play with yourself before you enter that last walkthrough. Hey, are we ready? Fresh set of eyes. Let's put them on right now. You know, that's, that's, that's the only help I can help somebody with. That's awesome. That's awesome. Marty, what about you? Final steps. Final that was steps. awesome. And you guys are getting like the real deal because Gabe, not only is he a real estate investor, but he's also someone who was in the business of contracting. He's um, GC. He can build a house. So you just heard it. I mean, that's it. That's the, the punch list. It happens. You got to do it. I'm actually, I'm running out guys. I'm leaving, but I will say this. 
I think Ronnie, you just did one. So no one's going to have as much experience right now, or at least someone who, cause you've done flips before, but it's still kind of a little bit newer right now, just cause it's in your backyard right now that you're doing them. So what was your final takeaway for the punch? You know, the thing that comes to mind. So we get done with the whole project and every, everything's done. We've, we've written out the punch list. The punch list has gone through and we're staging the property. And, uh, the realtor sends me a picture of the kitchen and uh, just, she took it with her phone. She sends me a picture and she has at the bottom of one of the cabinets is a circle out of the whole thing. We painted the cabinets. We did everything. They forgot to paint the baseboard of one cabinet that was off to the side. So it's like the old color. And so the final takeaway is, I love what Gabe said. Your guys are in this property day in and day out, right? And I had gone to the property probably three times, right? As a walkthrough. And and there's there can always be one additional thing that pops up that you just got to knock out, right? And don't get frustrated with that. That's part of the, that's part of finishing, right? I had to send my guy over there. He had to pull the cabinet out, go into the room, mask it off, paint the thing, put it back in. But like that happens, right? It happens where all you know, you think you're you think you're you know done with outlets, and then this happened on the property too. You think you're done with outlets, and my guy tells the other guy, he's like, Yo, did you do downstairs? He's like, ah oh, crap, right? And he's gotta do all downstairs. Like that stuff happens when you're at the property, especially if you're managing it yourself. Totally just expect that. Right. Just expect that to happen. Expect that final finishing push to not only be on a timeline because you're trying to list it. At least if you're like me, I'm a time Nazi. Right. Like we got a deadline and we're hitting it. Right. Um, but also like just keep plugging away, keep pressing through and uh, and get to the finish line, because once it's done, it feels it feels really, really good. Right. You feel good about what you did. So, Gabe. Uh, I know we're wrapping up, guys. We we are here every Tuesday. We're, we're uh, wrapping up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, well, I know we're wrapping up, but do we have the time to go over the power of the walkthrough from this past weekend's experience? Oh yeah, yeah. I can I can share that absolutely. What what, what time do we have? What's it? Forty three. Okay, we got time. Okay, yeah, guys. Yeah, so, so this is where I chip in and I go. Look, we we're doing this. So so Ronnie had the privilege of of uh, doing the, the the questions today. But I got a question for Ronnie. So for those who don't know, Ronnie does flips. He does other stuff. He does a lot of wholesaling deals. And were you going to wholesale this property that we're going to talk about? Uh, I, You're gonna close I was on. actually going to flip this property. So, All right. So guys, yeah, yeah, I was let's, let's go into the power of the walkthrough. Dun, dun, dun. This is what we're waiting on. Yep. Uh, Ronnie, uh, so, quick, quick overview. You yeah, walked the property so, a month ago or what? Yeah, we walked the property a month ago yeah. uh, when we got it. We were planning on buying it. It's actually two houses, okay? One got house, it. It, they're they're side by side. Two lots, two parcels. They own a two of them. Um, they're connected by one well. So part of our got thing it. is we're going to put in another well, split the water, rehab both houses. Got okay? it. That's what we're going to do. Um, pretty good. Great location. Uh, worst house in the location and the location mm -hmm. where we're at trees everywhere. Nice. Right. So we walked the house. Everything looks fairly good. We're going through the property. Um, I get lending set up Thursday. I'm supposed to close Friday. Got it. I have to go to Kalamazoo on Friday to finish Courtney, my other project. Got okay? it. So I call, I know the owner of the title company, his name's Nate. He's super cool, dude. He lives two minutes from my house, right? He comes over to my house quite often. He's like, what if I just stop by Thursday night? We sign the paperwork. You know, we'll get the seller to sign there in Florida. It's like, no problem. Um, I was like, I'm doing a final walkthrough on that property on Saturday. And he's like, okay, cool. So funding will be Monday, blah, blah, blah. So we've already done a walkthrough. We already know what the work's going to be. We know what we're going to happen. I have trash out lined up for Saturday. I mean, everything's lined up. We're going to knock out essentially one house this week. Nice. I get there Saturday. Now, granted, I've already signed the paperwork. Okay. Wow. I get there Saturday. <laughs> and guys, the water 
had been left on in the house and it had completely soaked through this is a little two two bedroom house right completely soaked through you step in it and your floor your foot goes through the subfloor the only reason you don't fall through is because the carpet is there right you pull up the carpet and you grab it and it's moist and wet and falling through so i i i immediately send an email that says yo like emergency cancel right like like stop funding everything right like we need to put this on hold this is not what we're expecting literally tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage to this point so much so the house it's i don't exactly know how this happened but i think it got into one of the load bearing walls the house itself is like like in the roof line it's like leaning to the side from where it happened right like literally terrible and uh Guys, this happened because I did a final walkthrough, right? Yeah. I know we talked about due diligence on the front end, but if you don't walk through it right before you, if I would have funded that deal, we were talking about having to put a shop on it, like tearing it down and put a shop and combining the properties and selling them together to make the money. But that final walkthrough specifically is to verify everything you know to be true, especially if there's tenants involved. Wow. Right. To verify all of it. So <clears throat> that's what happened literally this last weekend on Saturday. Um, it was really disappointing because I was expecting that to be with the two properties to be like a hundred thousand dollar deal. Nice. Um, but I would rather uh, you know, I mean, it was like thir- it was gonna it was gonna be like an extra thirty or forty thousand. It, it could have been more than that. Like it was really wow. Cool. Wow. Well, there you go, guys. That's, that is a crazy story. Uh, that's like that. We need to put that on the thumbnail or something like that. The water filled up the house. (laughs) Yep. I Um, mean, it's it like, so what was left on? Yeah. I just asking what was left on like the, I think it was the, it was the kitchen sink. Cause when we got there, it wasn't on. Wow. So someone had, I think it was the actual other, the, so the neighbor, long story short, the person in the house that lived there died. Mm-hmm. And it was the neighbor's grandpa or the tenant's dad, I think. And they were upset because we were buying the home. Right. And they didn't actually like the tenant either or the landlord either. And so my only thought is it was a disgruntled, like, there's right. no way you do that on accident. Right. If it's coming from the sink, we've seen one. I've seen two of them before in mine, which is a uh, what. Thank God. One was a laundry room, the, the spigot for the laundry room, the washer and dryer, you know, the washer yep. water was left on. It wasn't draining correctly. It was draining outside the wall. Yep. But that was a tiled house, like in like on all sides of the wall is all tiled. So I'm like, OK, so that was good. We just had to make sure that there was nothing, you know, major issues there. There's another one. And this was like a four hundred thousand dollar, four fifty ARV. Um, or we bought it for 450. I think we sold it for more now. I think about it, but the um, what do you call the the water spigot for the refrigerator? Yeah, you know, the supply line. Yep, they pulled out the refrigerator, and that supply line was still dripping, and it just dripped, and that backed up to we were planning on saving this really hand scraped wood flooring in the living room. Oh my gosh, guys, we had to tear off. But thank God we knew where it came from. Like it was just installed two years before so we can get the same product. Oh my gosh. So we were able to salvage some of the flooring, but man, nothing like walking to a house that you just closed on. You walk into it the next day and we're going, why is there water in here? Yeah. So, um, Dude, yeah, water it's, it's crazy. Power. Water is dangerous. I could yes. tell you that. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, guys. Well, every week on Tuesdays at noon, we come to you here with tips, um, different things to learn, things to go, whether you're wholesaling or flipping or have rentals or doing owner financing. Um, you can check us out on uh, um, on our podcast. So you can download our podcast. We're on YouTube um, and on Facebook. So um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you guys. Until next week. Peace. See ya.